In this video, we are discussing kinesiophobia. You might be thinking to yourself, what the heck is kinesiophobia? This term means fear of movement. In the physical therapy world, so many of us deal with patients every single day that have had an injury, and a result of that injury is now they fear movement. And this fear can be the direct motions that cause their pain in the first place, or as they start to let it take over them, it becomes bigger and bigger, and they start to fear all movement. So in this video, I wanna discuss the one problem that happens when dealing with these types of patients and how we miss it in the physical therapy world. Once we understand this one problem, your life to helping patients truly get out of this phobia will become that much easier. Before we discuss that, let me tell you a quick story. Just last week, I had a patient come in that was dealing with pretty severe kinesiophobia. They came in and complained of left knee pain, and they weren't really sure as to how the pain started. But what they were sure of is that it's continued to get worse, and it started to severely impact day-to-day -day motions. Interestingly enough, this person right off the bat so that they were aware that part of this problem was psychological. They said, yes, they did experience movement, but they realized and recognized that as they would go to do certain things, the fear of movement psychologically would start to come in and then they would just not do the motion. This is actually not so common in this scenario. Some patients that are dealing with this have no awareness and they are totally lost when it comes to that psychological standpoint. So for this patient of mine, that was a huge win that they were first aware of it because we first need to increase our patient's awareness before we change anything. So if you are dealing with a psychological problem, but you haven't increased the awareness as to what is going on, chances are it's going to be really difficult to get them to the next point. So step number one is to increase awareness. And like I said, Fortunately for this patient, they already had it. So as we continue through the assessment, we eventually made it to the left knee. And that brings us to step number two, the clinician. You need to have awareness. Before we start moving that knee, we need to check in with them. While we're moving that knee, we need to watch. What are their nonverbal cues telling us? Because for this patient, she was great with me moving it, but as I started to move her leg, just to check hip flexion, not to really move the knee, she started to wince, she started to grip the table, she started to anticipate pain, even though when we actually moved, it didn't hurt. So have that awareness as the clinician as to when someone's dealing with this psychological phobia that we need to be hyper aware as to how they're feeling and also what they're anticipating. So then we make it to the active straight leg raise. I tell her, as you go through this, I want you to straighten that knee down towards the table, maintain full knee extension, move the leg up as one unit, stop when you feel a stretch. Now, the second that I started going through this, I could see the anxiety increasing and increasing and increasing. To her, this was a motion that she feared. Now, I tell you this story because all of that brings us to the main problem. The biggest problem in the physical therapy world when it comes to treating and fixing kinesiophobia is that we don't educate our patients on what is expected versus what's unexpected. If we fail to do this, then any sort of motion that the person feels, they associate with pain. The thing is, that thing or feeling that they're feeling might be 100% normal. So as a physical therapist, when someone comes in with kinesiophobia, we need to tell them, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Jones, as you do your active straight leg raise, I expect you to maybe feel your calf and your hamstring, maybe even a little bit of a quad. But if you feel the inside of that knee joint right here, here, or here, that's abnormal. That's unexpected. So I'm using an active straight leg raise as an example, but the same goes for any sort of fear of a particular movement. If someone is fearful of squatting, educate them on what is expected during a squat. If you're going through a squat, what should you feel? What's normal? What's abnormal? So if we can start to really raise our level of 
awareness and education when it comes to expected feelings versus not, we can really start to decrease this fear of movement. The nice part of this is when you do this and establish this at the beginning of your sessions, not only will the rapport from a patient and clinician or patient and physical therapist go through the roof, your patient's going to feel more comfortable. They're going to start to move. And as we all know, if we're in the movement world, movement is medicine, right? So give this a shot. The next time you're dealing with kinesiophobia, dealing with someone that's afraid to move because of pain they've previously experienced so that the past pain can move on and you can start to get their future self better.